everybody, it's Kelly, and I have a little something special for you today. I am literally just home from a scrapbook retreat. I've had time to unpack my clothes and all my scrapbook supplies, which, you know, it takes me a couple of hours to pack the scrapbook supplies, but, you know, they go back in so fast, which is great. Anyway, I have a layout chair for you, and what I did is I actually completed 65 layouts. So there you go, 65 layout, or 65 pages, I shouldn't say layouts, because I do count double pages as um, two pages, just because I tend to do one pager, so I want to make sure that I'm just being productive for the year, so I just, that's just the way I personally count them, you do whatever you want. So 65 um, pages scrapbooked here. Uh, it is not the most I did. I think I did honestly 90 one year, but I was doing my nephew's wedding album and it was like, you know, a picture and maybe an embellishment or two on it. So that was pretty simple. I do have um, some playlists for album shares of those albums if you're interested in those, but I don't have the share from the scrapbook retreat where I did them. So anyway, the biggest question I always get asked when I talk about how many pages I get done at a scrapbook retreat is, do you pre-plan pages? And the answer to that is no, not at all, nothing. What I do is I take my photos, which I keep in four by six um, Copper Hopper photo keepers, and um, and th so these are my great nephew's photos. These are my grandkids, their family photos. And then I had another one for my photos, and look at that. So all of my current photos are scrapbooked. If I scrapbook things about myself, I'm going to have to go back in the past now because I have everything scrapbooked, except for things that I did this weekend, which, you know, I will print those and scrapbook those. But isn't that cool and exciting? Um, and I do scrapbook about myself a lot, but I do have, look at that. That's solid of uh, photos. And these are both 2018 and 2019 for them. So anyway, I take photos like this. These are in um, date order, but I don't necessarily scrapbook in date order. And I'll talk about that, I think, a little bit later in this video about why, some, why I don't do that. And it was just proven again to me this weekend why that's not a good idea for me. If you're a chronological scrapper, absolutely great and wonderful. You do what works for you scrapbooking wise. For me, I'm inspired by either the photo or the story. And so scrapbooking chronologically doesn't work for me so well. And I store in binders, so it doesn't matter. What I do is I literally take my scrapbook supplies pretty much as they are in my room. The only difference is, is I normally um, store my paper in cropper, hopper, um, Envelopes, let me go grab one. So this, this is a cropper hopper envelope. And let me see if I can show you. Paper sits in here like this. Some of them have pockets on front, some of them don't. This is a smaller collection of things for me, so it doesn't. But normally I store these on a shelf or, well, more than one shelf in my Calyx unit. But that's how I normally store them. When I go to a uh, a retreat what I do is I actually put them in the holders so they're like file folder holders for that are meant to fit these and that's how I store my paper at the retreat and I just store it alphabetically by manufacturer which is what I do in my Calyx unit so that makes that really simple for me I store my embellishments exactly the way they're stored now so here's one of the baskets I use these um, baskets right on my desk so those stay in that I just drop them in a 31 bag and take them. My, um, my pens and that kind of stuff. I do use my flower pot that I normally store my tools in. My pens kind of sit on my desk there. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. It really is basically the way I store it when I'm at home, which makes my process much easier. The two baskets that I always talk about that I keep to my right and left are to my right and left in front of me when I'm at the retreat as well. So that just that process is very similar to home, and it makes it easier for me because I'm thinking the same way I think when I scrapbook at home. The one thing that I changed from the way I scrapbook at home is, although I've started to do this more, is I almost batch scrapbook at 
a scrapbook retreat. And I'll talk about how that happens. By the way, if you want to see how my um, stuff is stored in my scrapbook room, just um, go to the playlist for, I think it's organization, if I remember correctly. If I remember, I'll try to um, link it. Otherwise, it's rooms or storage, that kind of a thing in there. I don't remember the playlist name, but I'll try to link it for you. If you want to see it and I don't remember, just shoot me a a note and I'll link it for you if I forget. So anyway, um, let me just kind of go through how I scrapbooked all of these. I'm not going to go into a ton of product down there. If it, there are no videos for these. I didn't video anything this time. Um, sometimes I do, but most of the times I honestly don't. It just helps my process go faster. And honestly, if you're a YouTuber, there is pressure when you're scrapbooking. I know that sounds crazy when you're doing it for YouTube, but you know, to try to keep your head out of the way as much as you can. And, um, you know, to not dilly-dally as much. This way I can be totally relaxed and just do. It's really creatively affirming and re-energizing for me, which is awesome. And I do do, I do a retreat three times a week. I didn't tell you that. I do one with one group and uh, a spring and a fall one with another group. The one group, I would do the fall retreat with them, except it's the weekend after my other group and my other group are older friends. So I don't uh, not that I wouldn't want to do two in a row, but that can be a little bit much. So let's go through the process. So I went to this retreat. It's uh, the weekend after Easter. So I left the Thursday after Easter. I'm just home on the Sunday. Easter was a week ago. So I had all sorts of fresh Easter pictures. The day before Easter, we ran this race called the Cottontail Classic. And so I was really inspired to do that. I grabbed my envelope of Easter supplies and I was really inspired to scrapbook all of the Easter photos and the photos from this race. So that's what I did here using some L Studio product. And then a lot of this other stuff is Echo Park. I do scrapbook my bibs usually as well for those of you um, who do that. And I did do these just in the order that I showed them. I think I'm going to back this stack down so it's not distracting for you. Plus at some point I'm going to have a double page layout that I need to get on here. So hang on a second guys. I'm just going to move my trimmer. My This is my Caterpillar Pro trimmer. And you'll notice I also took my mat off my desk. So I hope I keep can keep these in. So anyway, so there is the first layout. Then I went to the big layout. And this is one of the double pagers of all the photos from the race itself. The other one was um, more about um, some running struggles that I've been having lately after trying to recover from an injury and being really sick this winter. So it was just kind of a note to myself. This is from the race itself where, um, you know, I just talked a little bit about like some of the stuff that had gone on there. This is my sister and my brother. So we were all together. It's one of the ways we celebrated Easter. He did not run, but we all went to lunch afterwards. So, all right. So there's um, that page and just, I was inspired by product. I was waiting to use these wood Easter eggs and the stickers and the bright cheery spring colors. Although on Saturday while we were there, it snowed. <laughs> was crazy. It snowed all day long, but it didn't amount to much because it's spring here in Wisconsin. Um, and it's pretty much gone today. So then here is the next layout I did. I had um, seen this guy die cut at L Studio and I purchased it because they were 50 off um, in a big sale. And so I purchased that, cut it the morning that I was um, leaving and then was so excited to use it. So I did use that. So this is about the dinner where we had our, our lunch, where we had our Easter with my um, brother and sister and I. And um, my mom is not in Wisconsin at Easter time. And my sister and brother-in-law could not make it due to various things. That was the original plan, but then they couldn't. So anyway, so there's that page. And again, I'm using basically the same collections here and just pulling in um, things if I need them. Like I pulled in these letter stickers uh, from my stash. So that's one way that I do that as well. Here is another page I did again using the same basic product. This is my great nephew and his parents on Easter Sunday. Um, I love this wood veneer, but decided once I got it on the page, it was looking a little naked, even with this and this. So I went into my wood veneer stash and grabbed a couple pieces that I really needed to use up. So I was very excited about that. So there's that page. 
And if you want more details on any of the vendor stuff on here, I don't know if I'll be able to tell you all of them, but just again, leave a comment and I'll answer as much as I can for you. Okay, so then this is my grandchildren's family here. And um, this is their Easter layout. They sent me a bunch of pictures from that particular day. So again, just pulling, um, you know, from the regular supplies and then pulling in like some enamel dots and some twine from my own stash here. But I'm batch, kind of batch scrapbooking using the same supplies. And that saves me time because I'm not constantly going back and forth in to grab you know, new supplies, which is a great way to do it at home as well, too. If you have a couple of hours at home, pull, uh, you know, uh, however you kind of store them. I store mine by manufacturer so I can and by collection. So I can pull a collection and then um, just start scrapbooking with it, which is what I, I've really started to, to, to do a little bit more at home. And the collections are great because obviously they're meant all to go together. So if you're having a problem coordinating pattern paper, that's a cool way to do that is just use a collection because it's all meant to go together. And you think in terms of small prints and large prints and medium prints. All right, so this is the next one. This is about my Easter Sunday. We celebrated the day before, but I did have a really beautiful day. It was warm. It was gorgeous. It was 80 degrees in my little corner of the world, which is not normal. It really should have been about 50, maybe 60 that day. So just the couple of different things that I did on that day um, and using some of my favorite supplies here, those wood eggs. So I did that. And again, that was from the same um, collection. So then I had done that. I had scrapbooked um, that whole Easter thing. I was so inspired. And then I decided I want to give my um, niece and nephew the next installment of my great nephew's baby book. So I don't normally scrapbook chronologically, but I started to do that for this purpose because I knew I needed to get some things scrapped before I could hand it over. I had about three or four layouts I wanted to get done, maybe even a few, about three or four layouts that I need to get done. So this was the first one. And what I'm doing here now is I'm um, not necessarily batch scrapbooking, but kind of the same subject. Although I did go to, I don't remember if, if I picked these up at Michael's or joanne or hobby lobby and i can't tell you maybe i can i can't tell you because there's no i think these all came from joanne uh, joanne fabrics um and i had pulled some baby boy they are joanne now that i think about it some baby boy looking papers and so that's what i did is i just grabbed that handful grabbed some pictures of him that i thought would work with these of those that, that I needed to scrapbook early and just started scrapbooking away. So that's what I did here. And these are very thin paper because they're the list, the inexpensive um, kind. So in some of these, I backed them and some of I, I didn't. I'm not, usually if the paper's thin, I don't worry about it because it's going to end up in a page protector and that'll hold it. You know, the page protector will hold them. So um, some of these are fairly simple, but I'm okay with that. You know, that that that's uh, what happens and what I did is I pulled out um, my st one of my sticker books I don't remember which one I have Chamel's and I have a Dear Lizzie one and a Paige Evans one and a Maggie Holmes one so I'll pull those out sometimes and just keep flipping through them to pull out things to use and that's what I did in this particular case as well so here's the next one and this again I scrapbook this one in chronological order as well um, just adding a few you know, fairly simple, but it doesn't look simple because the background paper is not. But I just added a couple little stars on here once I was done with this little photo cluster. And it's a cute looking page. So then I was really honestly kind of starting to lose my mojo, but I kept going. And I think it's because I was forcing myself to scrapbook um, what I was coming up against. And it really happened with this page. Um, I had this paper from that other group. And then I was just really having a hard time corner, coordinating anything to go with this, which is ridiculous because I have a ton of supplies, had a ton of, ton of supplies with me, but I was just having a hard time. And the other thing is for this, I usually don't have stories to go through, go with the photos. It's just a photo that my niece has sent me. That's a little harder for me because with my grandkids stuff, the the stories often inspire me as much as the photos do. And 
if nothing else, my um, stepson and his wife will send me information about what is going on in those photos or I pull it right from Facebook, which is a big thing I do. And they know that, you know, that's A-OK -okay, um, that I do that. That's something that um, they expect to happen. But anyway, so I was starting to really have a hard time now because I just, I was making myself do it. The other thing was, is I had these um, placemats from Jelly Bean Soup that I wanted to use up. So I was forcing myself to scrapbook with those as well. Um, and I did sort of pull things that worked with them. It wasn't like I wasn't, you know, just putting it on a page. But I think to some extent that was causing the loss of that as well too. So be careful what you, you know, make yourself do. Here's another one of those placemats. It's cute. These are going to all go in a row. Um, but uh, they don't, you know, that that doesn't bother me that there's a placemat on each of these. So again, using some of that paper, and then this is my sister, so this is her grandchild, and when she came to visit him at Thanksgiving and she opened up the card or he gave her that big, big smile, it's one of the things I love now about like FaceTime and Skype and that kind of stuff. Even if you live far away, your grandkids can get to know you um, so that you don't look completely strange when they see you. All right, so just again, and this what I did is, then I was feeling sort of like monochromatic. I went to my blue folder, pulled out my blue papers, and matched it to that um, piece of paper back there. And then the last one that I did here, I have a big blue piece of cardstock over the top of it. And that is because, guys, this is a photo of him in the bath. There's nothing really showing, but I don't really like putting photos of kids in bathtubs out on the internet. I just don't think that's a good idea, whether you can see anything or not. And there are certainly are photos where you can, but I just, you know, covered his lower body just to, you know, I, I don't know. The protection there I guess so again one of those photos from Joanne and then I did the monochromatic thing again um, was doing that and used one of those placemats again just pulled in um, this I pulled in a glassine bag I have some of those from L studio where the um, like their cards come in them and that kind of stuff I save those so that I can do that use some these this is sticker book again here too so this is the last one I did because I had to walk away. I really felt like um, I was forcing this. It just was not working for me. So I walked away and then um, came back to it and then started scrapbooking some of the last photos from my vacation to uh, Marco Island, Florida earlier this year. And I was using this, I don't even remember what this collection of papers were who they're from. Um, it was, they're heavy and they're a collection I didn't know before, I think. But um, I started scrapbooking with these. And again, now I'm batch scrapbooking again. I've pulled a collection and I also have, um, I also have photos that have inspired me and I can pull those kinds of photos from that trip and they should all sort of work with this or something close to it. So that's what that is. Again, I'm grabbing some wood veneer, an older wood veneer, to try to use up at least some of my supply <laughs> because I have a lot. Here's the next one. And again, using wood veneer. This is, again, a Florida photo, adding a little bit of, you know, that wood veneer and some doilies. I haven't used doilies in a while. Um, part of it is I've been scrapbooking my grandsons and great nephews so much that I tend not to use them when I'm scrapbooking them, but this is that same paper collection as well. Another paper collection here, and this is serendipitous. I remember when I got these wood veneer as part of another, it, they were in another package, and I thought, when am I ever going to use anchor wood veneer? And there we go. I think there's only a couple left now, and I love the contrast between the dark and light. The other thing I decided to do when I was in that wood veneer thing, I pulled out some words that I thought might work. And then I also pulled out some of these frames to try to just use them on layouts. And I keep them sitting on my crop desk really close to my surface. And then they're upper in, you know, they're foremost in my mind. Now, let's see if we can get these on a page. Not that I had to, but um, I did. So that's exciting. So that's that one. Now this one is um, just one piece of paper in this border from that collection. I had to go into my stash now because I was starting to get towards the end of that collection. Um, and that's um, what I what I did here. And again, I think I pulled the Dear Lizzie sticker book here for these elements. 
and just like the way that looks. I take an envelope of just um, what I call faux solids, so a solid color that looks like it could be a background, and that's what this is. This other stuff here is from the collection that I was using. And then the last one from that collection and the last Florida photos I had, and really this was, I sort of ran out, so um, I'm using, this is a full piece, but everything else here is kind of scraps or from the cut apart here, and I, I have my bunch punches with me, but I don't take them all. I take a bunch of border punches and some circle punches, heart punches, star punches, um, label punches, that kind of thing that's more versatile. So that's what I did here. Here I used, um, I was looking for the card to go here and I like this one, but I also like this one. So I actually, I didn't have the right size punch with me. I own the punch to just punch this circle, but I didn't have it. So I said, well, I'm gonna try a white border and I did and I liked it. My friend next to me said, yeah, I really do like that really well. You'll notice by the way that some of these don't have titles on. So like this one doesn't have one. And um, this one doesn't have it either. In my mind, this yay is the title because we finally got to see the sunset. But, um, you know, if you really like titles, you can add them. I don't always anyway, but definitely when I'm at a retreat, I, um, I, I'll forget to put them on as I'm, you know, just kind of running through stuff. And that's okay. And this one is um, Happiness Found. That's kind of my idea what that title is. And not that that really matters. Um, nobody's going to ask me what the title of this layout is. So that's that. Then I went to my new Paige Evans Horizon stash, and I have not just the separate papers, but I also have the pad from, um, from Joanne. I've been there a few times in the last like five days or so. And um, I also have um, some of the sticker sheets and that kind of stuff as well. And again, I'm going into my wood veneers and I I wanted to use um, some sort of wood alphabet and found that and I love it. It's like half dipped in white. So that worked out just really well. And this is just, you know, pulling in some of the stickers from the collection and um, again, sticking with the collection. This is the background here is the cardstock from the collection. So it's not as, it's not as heavy a weight, but you can hear it's heavy. It's actually pretty heavy. It's not as heavy as a regular cardstock would be, but it it's a pretty good weight. It doesn't flop around on you like it would normally. Then I used what's probably my favorite place piece of paper from that Horizon collection um, about one of my favorite places on Earth. So that was fun, and I'm using um, going into sticker books here as well too, just to kind of get and using the stickers from that collection and then using you know grabbing some enamel dots and I love the way this like is color family the cool and the warm side so just kind of cool the way that worked out this again is more horizon here so and this is using um, the sticker sheets and this is the sticker sh alpha sticker sheet from the pad at Joanne some of the stickers this is definitely some of the paper from that collection i think oh and look at that i'm going to just grab my atg which is sitting right here and i used look at this you can tell i used the cardstock too here and then obviously this is a double-sided paper so um i did that was one of the ones that i bought you can buy them at joanne as well so okay so got that down sorry guys all right, so there's that one. This is um, about a running accomplishment. Then here's uh, about a little wine tasting I went to with some friends. Again, this is from the Paige Evans. I think this is from the actual, yeah, I think that one is actually from the um, project pad with some of my own card stuck behind it using some of the stickers from the um, collection. And then I think, I think this isn't, I don't know if that's, I think that might be a cut apart from the collection. And I just hid the, it is, now that I remember, I remember, because I hid what was behind here with this sticker, because whatever it was, wasn't great for this topic. Here's more of that Paige Evans Horizon collection here. And I am, sorry about that, guys. Um, I am using um, the glitter paper from the Project Pad. This is from the Project Pad this is as well and this might be as well so lots of great things this is me taking a picture of my granddaughter on her birthday and her little friend and i called it grandma razi because i'm as bad as paparazzi <laughs> so 
But um, my daughter-in-law actually took that picture of me. And this is going to be for my book, not for their book. But, you know, someday if they want to go through and they want to take this one, they can. But this one's for me. I'm going to keep it. Most of the photos of the kids end up in their family albums. But in this case, it's not going to. Uh, this is an another one from that Paige Evans collection. Um, I think this is available uh, single sheet. It might be in the might be in the pad as well too. But this this came from the single sheets. But I'm using the sticker stickers as well here. And then this is some of the die cuts that are available at Joanne as well. And again, another one of the cut aparts that didn't work as well, so I kind of made it blend in with the sticker over the top. So that kind of worked there. These are my brand new glasses. I picked these up on, I'm uh, videoing this on Sunday. I picked them up on Wednesday. And so I took a picture of myself because I went bigger. I had much smaller glasses, so I went bigger. And that's just something a little different. All right, so at this point now, I have used up a ton of the stuff from the project pad and I have decided, I think I'm done scrapbooking with this collection. I've done a really nice job with this. I still have lots left, tr um, trust me. But I was like, time to switch out to a different collection. At that point, I might have even, um, we might have even had dinner. And a lot of times that's when I change out. So then I just found, I'm going through now, and there were just a few photos left in my own envelopes. So I thought, well, heck, I'm going to scrapbook these. And some of these I've had ideas for for quite a while. So you know, that's okay for that's okay for me. I was very inspired by the photos. Otherwise I would have done something else. So this is just a little um a little page about uh the my coffee. These two are actually coffee they're from a photo plate coffee collection. This is an L Studio coffee collection and I think these are just some freckled fawn cups, that kind of stuff. This is also L Studio coffee. And again Here's one of those wood veneer words that I had just sitting up above my desk that I used on that one. Then um, we were laughing about the amount of stuff I bring. This is a picture of me leaving from the last treat I was at, retreat I was at and how much stuff I actually bring. I drive to it. It's only an hour away, so it's okay. So in that case, I think, figured I wanted to use my Simple Stories Crafty Girl uh, collection and that's what I did. And I actually got some of these Crafty Girls on there, which I was so excited about. And these things mean things about me or to me like this cup, cup of coffee it's my favorite coffee cup shape and both retreat uh, centers have them I always start out with a cup of coffee in the morning um there's a little note here about having too much washi because gosh knows um I have a lot of washi so and then I actually included some washi on here as well just because it was about you know that was there and titled it I don't have a problem <laughs> so anyway so that's that one um, this one is again about that let same scrapbook retreat. I usually take a picture, um, <clears throat> excuse me, of a project on my desk with a wine glass and then I post it a lot of times to Facebook or Instagram. So that's where these photos are really uh, coming from. And then this is, um, I'm trying to think what, oh, this is Jen Hadfield. That's where these um, pieces are coming from. So these are the die cuts from um, one of her collections and then the papers as well. And then another doily that I got in there. Then um, I decided to do some photos uh, from my stepkids and um, wanted to get, oops, wanted to get those done. Except there was one photo, this is my stepson and his wife, and I love this photo of them. The real story here is that they were, um, the reason it was in this particular with these other photos is they were chaperoning one of my grandson's field trips together, which, you know, of course, if you're a kid and your parents both get to come, oh my gosh, it's awesome because even one parent is wonderful. But I decided to do a story more about them as a couple and um, how grateful I am to have both of them. So that will be for their family album as well. So, and I just love that photo of them and was kind of inspired by this um, piece of paper. Sometimes I like that where you can take a journaling block and mount the photo on it somewhere and then journal around it. Chamel's um, journaling pads are great for that. I love those things. And you'll see um, some layouts with those in them a little bit later. Then this is that field trip. And I just, I wanted to get these photos scrapped. I like the autumn theme to this whole um you know, I, the, I was interested in scrapping autumn at this point, I guess. I don't know why, but I was. So um, that's what I did. And here I am 
I don't have enough. This was a Simple Stories collection. I didn't have two of anything. So I can't stretch it across. So what I'm trying to do is use the pieces and somehow coordinate. So I did that two different ways. And this is a good tip for those of you who like two pagers, but don't have two of the same background page or don't want to use two of the same background page. I think it's very interesting without the same background page is I use this green strip on both sides and then the photos are mounted on this blue paper from the same collection on both sides. And then I use feathers across and acorns across to kind of help um, coordinate everything here. So that's something that I like to do with two pagers as well. You'll see me, you know, do the exact same thing from side to side or something similar, but also lots of times I'll do this where I use two different background papers. All right, so that's that one. I have another two pager from, this is the same week. First they went to, with the kindergarten class and then they um, went on their own. So here we have um, a two-pager. Now, the one thing about this is, is the diagonal doesn't go the same. I wish it had, but I didn't have more than one of these. So I just decided, you know what? They're gonna be sitting like that in a binder anyway. So yeah, I'm fine with this. But I did use, I was able to find the same um, background paper here. I actually had, yeah, I did, I, I think I did. Yes, I had two of those, so I was able to do that. But again, they're not exactly the same. They're not a mere image, um, just because I got 10 photos on a two-page layout. And these are um, straight out, well, not straight out of camera, because I might have actually altered the light and stuff like that, but they're not cropped. They are the size that they were, because your phone cameras, of course, take smaller photos. So I, I try to um, do that, so. That's that and some old Hobby Lobby pumpkins. I'm very glad to get those on there. Okay guys, I'm gonna pause you for just a second and plug my phone in because it's giving me a little warning. So I'll be back in just a second, okay? Hey guys, I'm back. Hopefully you had a chance to like catch a drink or something, which you really didn't because through the magic of photo editing, um, this is just, I'm starting right back up and you're not gonna, it's more seamless for you. Anyway, so now what I did is I also had the Maggie Holmes Sunny Days collection and I wanted to use that. So that's where I'm going now with these pieces. Um, and I love this paper, but I only had one sheet of it. So I just cut up a tiny little border here to use a tiny little strip to use. That was dictated by how um, high these photos were. I did manage to have two pieces of that pink background paper though. So I was able to use those um, and then I'm using some of the pieces from the ephemera from that collection and this is a really cool in the sticker book they have this full sheet sticker and it was a little bit too wide because I think it's a true four by six so I just cut it till I made it work and then I put it on my background so there there's a good um, uh, picture uh, look at that and then it's the background for my title which is kind of cool the way it went and then I love the way this doodle bug washi worked out too I love this layout these are very good friends of mine as a matter of fact this friend was scrapbooking with me over the weekend um, and the rest of us we're friends from high school but we've really known each other longer like she and I've known each other since we were three so that's more than 50 years guys <laughs> All right, so there's that layout. Um, then still scrapbooking my own photos and getting lots of photos scrapbooked here because I'm doing double page layout. Here's another one where I'm not using the exact same background paper, but they have things in common here. So the gold in the leaves and the gold here, this was a trail run, so kind of the nature thing worked for me with this. And then I joined them together making them make sense with that blue polka dot paper. I only had one sheet of that, but I could cut, you know, that I didn't need it that big of a strip because these are only four inches wide. And it all made sense because it was a trail run and there were beautiful blue skies that day. So I like the fact that that blue is across the top and then these are down through the bottom. Um, and you know, I've got nine photos plus my bib on this one two page layout. So loving the way that worked out. This is my sister and brother-in-law who run with me. So, um, and the reason this was, there's a lot of really like, weird brown photos here. Well, the reason that is, I'll see if you can tell, this is very muddy. I mean, it was a mud bowl. Um, it was two days after a rain and it was just squishy and disgusting. And then we ran this steep hill thing, like they weren't kidding. They were really steep hills. This is almost straight up here. You can't tell. And I'm only about half, well, not even halfway up this hill because it 
kind of whines a bit. But anyway, so that's important for me. Um, and this, I, I always think this is funny. So I always give my sister a hard time about when she and my brother-in-law choose the run we're going to do, we end up running mountains, <laughs> which we did. All right, so there's that two-page layout. Then I was telling you guys about um, Chamel's project pad. Here's another um, layout using that project pad. And um, what I did here is I just, again, mounted the photo on it and then used it for journaling, added some stickers in here because I had some extra space. This is a little story about my cat, cat from last week. Actually, cats, because there's another one here. So I have these two. I have a black cat, and then I have kind of a gray tabby cat. Um, clever. What the duck? I thought that was funny. Um, this is from the sticker um, book from uh, Chamel's new collection. Um, which, of course, I can't, uh, well, I can't think of it. It's, um, anyway, it's the one that you can get the project pad of. And if I think of the name of it, uh, oh, Sparkle City. My goodness, I can't believe that. So this is Sparkle City. The project pad is, um, I think, yeah, this is Sparkle City because of the colors here. This is actually a Glitter Girl sticker. And, or, yeah, Glitter Girl sticker, head in the clouds background here. So I'm combining a lot of Chamel stuff. And this is actually a Bella Boulevard which I haven't been telling you guys that, but if you want to know that information about something specific, let me know. So I'm in my Chamel folders in my Chamel collection here, and you can tell that because I'm using a lot of Chamel stuff. This is also an old Chamel paper. This is for my great nephew's um, album, and a friend was visiting them where they live. This is so sweet because these two went to college together, and he came more than halfway across the country to meet their baby. And that's a thing women do. I mean, I think that's really cool that the guys do it. They're, they're all friends, but they're, these are the primary friends here. So I thought that was cool. And then I'm using Chamel's sticker book here as well to just kind of bring that in. Here's more of that word paper. This time it's in the right orientation, but again, I just um, grabbed just small pieces of it and just added that all in there. More Chamel here. This is older Chamel with um, some washi tape. Um, this might be from Go Now Go. I think it is because those are Go Now Go colors. So very old. Not this piece, but this. This is Box of Crayons here. I think this is Box of Crayons. And I, this is Go Now Go as is this. And then um, that super is a sticker as well as these from their, from her sticker book. So just a cute little picture of my nephew and the baby, who is not that little anymore. Another one here, this is a story about the Christmas market um, where they were visiting. They went down to the Philadelphia Christmas market when they were visiting at Thanksgiving. So I used Christmas colors, but not quite. So aquas and reds here. So it's aqua instead of green here, just because, um, you know, they're having their picture taken. So I saw this camera paper and thought, oh, let's put a little strip of that on here. And then there's a big swath of red here, especially on this side, because there's so much going on right here. It gives your eye a place to rest. And then I MacGyvered some letters here. I don't know if you can tell that. See that T? That, that both of those T's are MacGyvered. So I love this alphabet, but I'm almost out of it. All right, um, more Chamel, and then this is the new collection here. This is Sparkle City. So all the papers and then um, the stickers here are all Sparkle City. So I think this, I don't, this navy is not Sparkle City. I think that's from, I think it's from her, hmm, might be from her regular, st her hashtag sticker book, but the rest of it is Sparkle City for sure. And I actually stopped and bought more paper of these two today because um, I love this and I don't have any more pictures I wish I had pictures from my um, granddaughter's birthday because that would be great for that so I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do It'd be make a great card too as well all right then more working on his baby book a little bit more um, loved this photo I did this um, die cut because I knew I was gonna be scrapbooking a lot of his um, I cut it on my Cricut, and this is a Paige Evans cut, and I just did it in blue. I've done, I did something else similar with stars in yellow, so I didn't want to repeat that because they might end up in the same book. And so I just did that on a little green background to work with his little sheets here, have foxes and trees in green and blue. So this is just all coordinated, and he's wearing fox, um, a fox onesie there. And I happen to have this little fox um, in a Christmas collection, so I grabbed him. He has a little scarf on, but that's also appropriate because it was, um, like, this is New Year's Eve, actually. So, and this is my sister's. He was visiting my sister, so added a couple of um, 
stars and I only had two orange stars so I said oh no place to put the third here's my orange triangle right there we're done and some simple all right um now back to grandchildren and I think because I pulled out that fox from the winter collections because I knew that's where it was then I grabbed some winter photos which these are my grandkids and their um other grandpa just grab some of that stuff this was like a three by four card that I cut down so make stuff work for you just did that work that these are actually two different paper collections there since I was in winter um I also grabbed this collection it was in the same um well not in the same photo uh, not the same folder but I had my winter folders out so I grabbed this cute one of my uh, granddaughter and this is right before Christmas which she was she played patty cake she was learning to play patty cake so I thought that was cute and she has like a little polar bear in her jammies so that little polar bear was cute and then I liked this layout as it was done but when I added this title in this really sparkly um, glitter font it like made the layout it just gave that little bit of sheen and shine that it needed something it needed a little something else to pop it all right next I grabbed this this is another page Evans cut file that I had cut and ready to go I don't bring my Cricut with me by the way because I think that you know that's a time suck for sure if you want to scrap a lot of layouts so um, I had some time on Easter Sunday and actually cut a bunch of these and this one did not cut all that great there's a there's definitely pieces in it that are you know a problem but it is what it is right so pop that on a background just added some stickers Um, this is a lot of Felicity Jane here uh, here this is Chamel background but Felicity Jane um, die cuts and stickers then um, I, when I was in, I thought I was done with all my, I, at this point I thought I was done scrapping any photos of myself or anything from my story until I went into the die cut thing to grab this and remembered this photo. So this is from the day of that Easter bunny run, the day before Easter, and this photo is totally an accident and I love it. So look at how cool that is. There's the sun flare. You get just the corner of my face. I think I put my phone down and accidentally hit it and took the photo. And I actually took two of them, and I love them both. But this one had a better sun flare. So I really wanted this to kind of just stand out on its own. So I just wrote Easter, put the bunny and the carrot there. A um, little bit of washi here. This is back to that Easter Park Easter collection from um, Echo Park. And they do a really cool Easter collection every year. I have two of them I think that are now combined they also do a great spring collection too which this might be from there as well too and some stickers from another Easter collection all right guys then um then I decided to go back to scrapping some things from my grandkids and some stories I really wanted to tell and this is kind of a gross story but it's kind of it's kind of gross cool my grandson can blow spit bubbles like you blow bubble gum bubbles <laughs> So it's disgusting. But anyway, his brother and his dad think it's the coolest thing. It, I think it's very interesting that he can do this. So I, they, they made him blow one for me one day. So I took pictures of him because, you know, you want to get people's personality traits, right? So this is kind of a personality trait of his right now. So I love that this says crazy cool kid here and little Mr. Superstar in the dream big, like, you know, big dreams. And the I have a superpower kind of a thing here so anyway so this is and, and life with you is never dull so this is a cute story about him this is a simple stories uh collection boy collection called little dude or little dude and back with that same collection here um i've got this is that background these papers and then um just pulling in bits and pieces from that collection as well, just to tell the story about same grandchild here, and he's really good at puzzles, and he's pretty young, so it's pretty kind of cool. All right, then my granddaughter had a birthday about a month ago, and I still had all of her photos to scrapbook. I scrapbooked uh, 28 of them. There were two more that I didn't think were as good, so I... Um, got rid of them so this was my first one I wanted to do because she had she was dressed as Princess Poppy and I didn't know who that was until I had to make something that was Princess Poppy themed because I volunteered to do that and I had to look it up so anyway Princess Poppy um, bright fuchsia pink lavender and white with a little bit of hint of blue you'll see her little headdress later 
So um, what I did is I went through the 30 photos I had, kind of grouped them into what I thought were stories from her birthday, and that's how I scrapbooked this. So this is Chamel's um, new Sparkle City collection. This is the paper pad with the glitter paper and then paper. And then I've got L Studio stuff on here, um, basically, uh, from this. So that's where this is and a little bit of washi tape that I don't remember where that's from in the navy to pull the navy in there. So I, a whoa, you know, a lot of color here, but there is relief because I've got a swath of um, that more lavender up there that gives your eye a rest. But that is definitely a Princess Poppy layout. Then here's another one of those pre-cut um, pre uh, words or, or cuts that I did I guess and I cut it in this pink and I had this strip left so I saved it because I had this idea to do a border on one side with photos in the cut and when I started to do the photos if I I should have saved the other two but I'd already torn them up because I didn't think they're good because they might have worked in one of these other spaces probably not as much because I find with photos when you're going to do this you need a big more big open space so that's what I have here. And I could have, the one thing that I didn't do is um, I could have left these areas here white. You know, like all of those areas. That's something you know, you know, like Paige would do. But I just wanted to cut it the way it was. And I still think it's very effective as well. So that's that piece. And then this is a strip from uh, one of the um, Sparkle City papers. Then I grabbed my birthday folder and started working with some Bella Boulevard papers um, birthday collection. So that's what I'm doing here. And I just have all sorts of birthday embellishments from Bella Boulevard and um, Echo Park, a couple of other places. So just her cake um, photos here in a line and a strip. And again, Bella Boulevard papers there. And again, it's just all coming out of one paper envelope. And then this is her with Mama and Daddy. And again, this is Bella Boulevard. Um, basically, I, I, this I think this is Bella Boulevard as well, too. So just really bright because the party was very bright and I like to pull the feeling. Then here is a picture of her in her little Princess Poppy headband, which she did not keep on very long. Understandably, it's kind of big. But one of the cool things about this, guys, is I pulled the colors from this and her outfit and they're all here on the page, but they're not bright like they are everywhere else. So I have the purple from her tutu, which you really can't see here. There's the blue from her headband. There's more of that blue. Here's the green and then the pink. But this pink is a softer, more muted pink like these papers are. So I just love the way this turned out. And I did this very intentionally because one of my friends, I was telling her about it and she's like, Oh, but I think people will understand. I'm like, you know, I did that on purpose. It's not that I didn't have the colors. Um, it's just I did it on purpose because I wanted to soften this down a little bit because you'll see so far everything's been really bright and the next one is really bright too. So there's the cake, um, crazy bright. So I decided just to work with crazy bright here. Glad I used this envelope. I've had this from, I think this is either Hobby Lobby or Recollections for ages. So I'm glad to finally have it on a layout. And again, you know, just pulling some of the colors, the pinks and the blues um, and the green and the purple from the cake to um, the layout. This is not as intense as the cake color, the purple and the cake color on purpose to give your eye a little bit of a place to rest. And then this one is kind of simple. So this is her opening her presents. It's a collage of four on a background with just some chipboard and a few, um, like a little label here and an alphabet there. Don't forget when you're MacGyvering letters, if you turn threes the opposite way, you can make them into E's. So that's a good thing. So sometimes you need just something a little bit simple. And there were a lot of photos on one page. And then this is the last from that from that collection. My um, oldest grandson wanted to wear her headband and he said, take a picture of me and send it to daddy. So I did. So I scrapbooked, you know, the colors with him in there and it worked out great with his little shirt and, you know, little balloons and stuff because this was a birthday party and kind of a fun thing. And I did write March um, highlights here because it was one of my favorite pictures from the month of, Mar month of March and just a little question mark and exclamation point saying, is he really a princess? All right, guys. Uh, then here is a two-pager from the party. I forgot that I did this one last. So this is all the other photos of guests at the party, some decor with guests, and then, um, you know, like the food, at least part of the food and that kind of stuff. So that they can kind of remember, because this is just beautiful. These are the veggie and fruit trays that were done in a rainbow order. 
Um, and just this is an old Amy Tangerine paper I had and, you know, bringing in the purple. Um, this is a crepe paper birthday collection, just bringing that sort of in to a little party theme there. And because there was no purple in this um, and I used purple here and here, I just added some purple hearts onto each of those to kind of pull colors together across the layout. So that's that. And again here, I think I have, yeah, I have, um, well, nine pictures. I have five on this one and four on this one and a two-page layout. You don't see me do those all that often, but I do definitely do them. So then this is coming towards the end of the night. I'd cleaned up because I was all done. I thought I was going to be done, done. And I decided to do, I was feeling inspired by this photo that <laughs> my great nephew has a onesie on that says everyone is thankful for me and they sent this to all of us on um, uh, Thanksgiving Day and we are so I found I knew I had this L studio collection that called family something family moments or something like that it's older and it's very family themed so I grabbed that I cut this strip in half and then just added a couple little pieces here so he's still really the you know the highlight and Sorry, guys. I'm just going to do this if I find them because I don't want to have to try to remember to go back and do it. <laughs> Sometimes you can tell when you're scrapbooking fast. So there we have him all glued down. So there's that. And I was going to stop, but I thought I have the other half of this paper. This is my great nephew's um, book. This is my grandkids' family book. So they will never be together. I use kind of the same theme. Let me put them side by side or same arrangement basically, but a little bit, you know, a little bit of a difference here. I actually journaled on this one about, um, about how he was two in this photo. And that was really hard to believe, but kind of, you know, using in this particular one, I, I kind of used more embellishments where that were the color of whatever the label was or sticker there. So that's that good way to do this. Love the, um, noteworthy paper here. Cause it is noteworthy that he was two. So I thought, thought that was pretty cool. And again, cleaned up and got inspired by this photo. It just kept, I was up till 1.30 last night scrapbooking. But they're getting more simple here, which is okay. You know, you don't notice that. So I've wanted to uh, scrapbook this photo of him with his tooth for a long time. And I'm like, I really want to get that done. So I stayed up to do it just a little bit. Sometimes I'll do this to use this as kind of a frame. This little triangle paper reminded me of teeth. <laughs> So I thought that was kind of fun to do that. And just a little L Studio card with the journaling and then um, the black alpha with a couple little stickers here. So not huge, but a really kind of high impact because of the colors, I think. And he's wearing a little black and um, red. And I I used to have a paper with these colors in, in a plaid, but I, I don't have it anymore. I did look. So thought about that, but I've used it already. And I know where I used it after I thought about it. So then... Um, the next thing I um, decided to do was this little one here. I was looking for, this is in the morning now, I was looking for my um, black and white striped paper so I could do another picture that's like this. And I couldn't find it because I left all my black and white um, pattern paper, my like faux solids, home. Um, so I just, I have another picture that I'm going to, with him wearing this with the cute little red hat that I just put off doing, but I found this cute bella of our transparency and thought that was fun. So just did it kind of monochromatic red, a little bit of journaling and a little bit, again, I've got some of those L studio stars on here and this is an L studio, um, puffy stick, uh, alpha. So kind of a, just a fun little simple one. And then this photo as well is kind of a goofy hat. There's, I don't know what the story is behind here, but I just put a date on it and, you know, you have a cute hat hat there, mister, because he does have a cute hat. And I think Mama was taking that because somebody made that for him, I think, if I remember correctly, but I'm not positive about that. So um, because it's a taking a picture of him, there's the cameras, and then I just kind of tried to pull in some reds that couldn't get exactly the same red because this is pretty orange, but it was okay. And then just pulled in the navy from the cameras for that. Here's another photo I've wanted to scrapbook for a while. So I'm going back to my grandkids. Um, and so this one took me kind of forever. The title here being the first thing, it, here's that journaling um, pad again. Title being, I wanted to do it in navy and this is the only off I had that had the letters I needed that I could even MacGyver if I needed to, although I didn't need to. So I just did this. Um, some red, a little bit of a hint of color here to give it a little pop. And then 
I couldn't find any journaling blocks that I like, but I had this little toucan one and I thought, oh, what the heck? Who says you can't use a toucan on this? So I added my little toucan stickers, including this little guy here, kind of like the toucans are telling him kids in the back seat. So he got promoted when he had a baby sister. He had to go all the way to the back because the two car seats are up from his younger brother and his baby sister there now. So, and I have to do a little repair here. So there's the little toucan layout. You can, you know, it, this stuff may not make sense to everybody else, but it's kind of fun to put those little hidden things, I think, in it. So last but not least, again, I use the Chamel Project Pad. This is another photo that has been a while when my um, daughter-in-law and uh, stepson were tag teaming the kids last summer with the diaper change. Um, and I don't think you can see anything there. Sorry, guys, but I'm going to just put my hand over it. So that's what they're doing here. And I just love how they work together. So there's the hearts. This whole layout, I said to my friend when I was done, is busy and chaotic, but their house is busy and chaotic now because they have three kids and another one on the way. So these say like, when it rains, it pours, rainbow of possibility. This one says dream and plan. And this is like, you know, a bright idea kind of a thing. But I like how this kind of all works together. And this paper has a cream background. So it was nice that this has a cream background in it as well. So guys, that is the end. You have now seen all 65 pages from my um, scrapbook retreat this weekend. If you have any specific questions, um, like I said, just ask and I'll try to answer them as best I can. Hope you guys are well and I will be back with a layout again soon. Bye. Mm -hmm.